first part of the 20th century is referred to as the modernist age. In the years 1900 to 1950, there were two worldwide wars which greatly affected social, economic, and cultural life. World War I, or the Great War, from 1914 to 1918, and World War II, from 1939 to 1945. The rise of communism in Russia and China revolutionized the social and political systems both within those countries and within their spheres of influence. Stalin's industrialization of the Soviet Union during his 30 years of leadership and the Great Terror resulted in an estimated 20 million Russian deaths. Reeling from its defeat in the Great War, Germany's election of Adolf Hitler as chancellor in 1933 led to the rise of fascism, nationalism, and racism in the institutionalization of genocide during the Holocaust. New genres of art were developed in the 20th century with the introduction of mass media in the US. New forms of documentary arts included commercial film, radio programs, posters, and photography. Developments in science, such as Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics, sparked an interest in science fiction, including the late 1800s novels of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds was read by Orson Welles in a 1938 radio program that caused a panic for audience members who thought the Earth was actually being invaded by aliens. Cubism was a revolutionary departure from representational art. The area around painted objects became part of the abstract geometric forms. Cubists presented the object from many angles simultaneously. In the analytical phase, only browns and grays were used, so the colors didn't distract from the lines and planes. In the next phase, the synthetic phase, Cubists used the technique of collage. George Brock and Pablo Picasso are the most well-known Cubists. Picasso's La Demoiselle de Avignon, The Ladies of Avignon, show five nude female figures, most likely prostitutes, posing and gazing at the viewer. The background and the women themselves are made up of fragments of geometric shapes, so the images appear to be shown from multiple angles. Picasso was influenced by Paul Cezanne, especially the work Bathers, and by primitivism, the fascination with tribal art from Africa, the South Pacific, and Indonesia, and very early European art and folk art. Picasso's 1911 Man with a Violin is from the analytical Cubist phase, as are Georges Braque's Violin and Candlestick on the left and Women with Guitar on the right. Another movement of the modernist period is Futurism. Futurists incorporated technology and industry and art and celebrated motion and speed. Their ideas were based on the writing of Italian poet Marinetti, who wrote the Futurist Manifesto in 1909. Examples of Futurist sculpture include Baccioni's unique forms of continuity in space on the left and Brancusi's bird in space on the right. You can see in these two Brancusi works the contrast between his 1908 sculpture The Kiss and his 1928 futurist work Torso of a Young Man. A group of artists centering around Henri Matisse called themselves Fauves, which means wild beasts, and featured color in a new way to depict light and space. Fauves believed that art expressed the emotional state of an artist. A good example of Fauvism is Henri Matisse's Madame Matisse. Notice the unusual choice of bold colors in the woman's face, including the green line dividing her face. Matisse's 1910 Dance 2 includes some hidden references. One is the initial M for Matisse, created by the joined arms of two of the dancers. Another is the image itself, which is borrowed from Matisse's earlier work, The Joy of Life. Non-objective art is an art form that has no recognizable subject matter. The artist's goal was to create art that remedied the soullessness of modern life. Kazimir Malevich's 1913 Black Square may not seem like art, but there's more to it than what you see. It was exhibited during a chaotic time in Russia, World War I in the aftermath of the 1905 Russian Revolution. In addition to being a work of art people had never seen before, it was also exhibited in a high corner of the room in the spot usually reserved in a Russian home for an icon, a picture of a saint. When Malevich displayed a black square in a, the place where a holy image is usually found, he was making a statement about the spiritual significance of the black square and the supremacy of color and shape. Malevich created other suprematist pieces, including White on White in 1918. Pete Mondrian believed in the supremacy of black and white in the straight line. Later, works such as composition with large red plain, yellow, black, gray, and blue, 
also featured the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Primary colors are the colors from which all others can be made. Mondrian's Broadway Boogie Woogie is another example of suprematism, a type of non-objective art. It represents the essence of 1920s New York, capturing the syncopated rhythms of jazz. Kandinsky's non-objective on white two shows abstract images on a various shaded white background sliced through with black. Expressionism is the art genre that features intense non-naturalistic color, generous free and textured brushwork, and emotional or mystical subject matter. The movement started with the German expressionist groups who called themselves De Brucke and De Bru Rider. Franz Mark, a member of De Bru Rider, painted Dreaming Horse in 1913. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner was part of De Brucke. This is his Street Berlin. Emil Nolde painted Dance Around the Golden Calf. Paul Clay's All Around the Fish is a great example of the mystical aspect of expressionism. Metaphysical art was an art movement that depicted images of life beyond the senses and physical reality with dreamlike qualities. In 1917, Italian artists De Cerco and Cara painted arcaded squares with unexpected juxtapositions of objects, like in this painting of the torso of a statue and bunches of bananas. Marc Chagall's 1911 Eye in the Village shows a dreamlike view of his Russian village centering around a goat-like animal and a man whose eyes are linked by a thin black line. This shows the interconnectedness of the villagers and the animals living side by side. Dada, or anti-art, is the rejection of reason and order in art. This movement was founded by the writer Hugo Ball in 1916 at the Cabaret Voltaire in Zurich. The term Dada means nothing. Marcel Duchamp created a new form he called ready-mades, which included items such as postcards and urinals that he reframed as art. Jean Hans Arp created artworks through the process of chance. Arp describes the Dada movement like this. Revolted by the butchery of the 1914 World War, we in Zurich devoted ourselves to the arts. While the guns rumbled in the distance, we sang, painted, made collages, and wrote poems with all our might. Dada works would later influence the genres of performance art, and pop art. Duchamp's pre-Dada work, Nude De Descending a Staircase Number 2, in 1912, caused a sensation. The abstract depiction of a figure on an off-balance staircase contrasted with the more traditional realistic depictions from the late 19th century. In 1917, Duchamp submitted this work, photographed here, to be exhibited in a New York gallery. Duchamp took a urinal, turned it on its side, signed it R. Mutt, and titled it Fountain. The gallery denied his submission, declaring it a useful object, but not art. Another Duchamp ready-made is his 1919 LHOOQ, a postcard of the Mona Lisa on which he added a mustache and a goatee. The title is a pun. In French, the letters sound like the French phrase, there is a fire down below. Hannah Hawke's 1919 Cut with the Kitchen Knife uses a technique of collage, pasted papers arranged on a canvas. Hans Arp arranged black and white shapes by the laws of chance to create compositions such as this, constellation according to the laws of chance. The work of psychologists Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung influenced the work of 20th century artists, particularly those associated with surrealism. Freud's interpretation of dreams made popular the practice of dream analysis and the tapping of the subconscious. Freud categorized the mind into three parts, the id, instincts, ego, reality, and superego, morality. The development of civilization results in the sublimation of the id. Through the process of psychoanalysis, people could free their unconscious desires that were repressed by parental and societal taboos. Carl Jung wrote about the theory of the collective unconscious, which is that all humans share a common memory in our subconscious. This is expressed in our dreams, archetypes, stories, and fairy tales. Surrealist painters sought to release the images of the subconscious. Andre Breton used automatism to draw and paint images automatically to try and tap into the subconscious. Like the stream of consciousness writers, he would draw quickly and without stopping and let the images reveal themselves. Merritt Oppenheim's fur-covered cup, saucer, and spoon is an image that would be seen in imagination or dreams, but probably not in reality. Salvador Dali's The Persistence of Memory is an example of one of the many surrealist works Dali created. 
The images of melting clocks, swarming ants, and a distorted image of Dali's own eye represented the altered reality and the symbolism that can be experienced in our dreams. Juan Miro, Person Throwing a Stone at a Bird, 1926, contains abstract dreamlike images. Rene Magritte challenges our perception of reality with the betrayal of images. The French text reads, this is not a pipe. Literature of the modernist era reflected both the rejection of tradition and the influence of developments in psychology. Poets discarded meter and rhyme, writing in free verse. Virginia Woolf's novel, Mrs. Dalloway, consists of an interior monologue or stream of consciousness, revealing the inner thoughts of the main character, Clarissa, over the course of a single day. James Joyce uses a similar technique in Ulysses. T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland, used interior monologues from multiple characters in a disjointed format that incorporates phrases from multiple languages. In Franz Kafka's novella, The Metamorphosis, the main character becomes a giant insect, creating a new type of ironic, self-doubting, anxious hero for the modern age. Bertolt Brecht's Three Penny Opera is an example of the genre of epic theater, which is theater that exposes social issues. This opera dramatically shows the disparity between the ruling class in Germany and the working classes. 20th century music also tended to reject convention. Stravinsky's 1913 ballet, The Rite of Spring, shocked the music world and incited a small riot at its opening. Stravinsky used costuming from Russian folk tradition and created a score with multiple meters or polyrhythm and multiple simultaneous keys or polytonality. This created a disturbing dissonance. Arnold Schoenberg also rejected the classical tradition of orchestral music with his use of atonal music or music that is not composed in a key. His 12 tone method was not popular with audiences. On your own, listen to a sample of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring and Schoenberg's Pierre Lunaire. In the US, a new genre of music developed from African-American origins. Jazz used improvised melodies, swing rhythm, syncopation, and the blue note. On your own, listen to selections from George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess and Rhapsody in Blue and the great Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Charlie Bird Parker, John Coltrane, and Miles Davis. In this 1923 photograph, King Oliver's Creole jazz band plays at Tulane University in New Orleans. In the early 20th century, a new genre of cinema was born. Movies were black and white and silent until the late 1920s. Early notable or notorious films were D.W. Griffith's the Birth of a Nation, a tale of the KKK that was screened in Woodrow Wilson's White House. The silent films of Charlie Chaplin, including the satire, The Great Dictator, and the Soviet film by Eisenstein, Battleship Potemkin, with its innovative montage technique. Cinema served as entertainment, but was also used as a form of Nazi propaganda in Leni Riefenstahl's The Triumph of the Will. Innovations in style and function developed in 20th century architecture. Modernist architecture included the new international style developed by designers such as Walter Gropius in the Bauhaus School in Germany and Le Corbusier in France. Features included glass and metal designs and a clean functional design. Ludwig Mies van der Rohe's Seagram Building in New York is an example of international style. Art Deco is an architectural style with sleek, simple shapes with decorative forms, like the gargoyles of the Chrysler Building. The Chrysler Building was part of the Manhattan height battle of 1928 to 1931. In 1913, the Woolworth Building, designed by Cass Gilbert, was the tallest building in the world until the construction of the Bank of Manhattan Building and the Chrysler Building in 1929. The Bank of Manhattan Building was the tallest building in the world for one month in 1930, from May 1st until May 28th, when the Chrysler Building opened. Architect William Van Allen secretly constructed a 125-foot spire that would ensure the Chrysler Building would win the tallest building title. The Empire State Building was the tallest building in the world from 1931 until 1970. It was once again the tallest building in New York City, but not the world from September 11th, 2001 until 2012. Architect Frank Lloyd Wright incorporated nature in his building, including falling water in Pennsylvania and in the Guggenheim Museum in New York. Political paintings. Artists Orozco, Sigueros, and Rivera created murals on public buildings in Mexico. Diego Rivera's The Enslavement of the Indians expressed criticism of Spain's oppression of the indigenous people in Mexico. Rivera was married to artist Frida Kahlo, shown here as the worker in orange, and in her work, Self-Portrait with Monkey. 
Picasso created the large oil painting Guernica after the 1937 decimation of the town of Guernica by German bombs during the Spanish Civil War. Dorothea Lange's 1936 photograph, Migrant Mother, captures the realities faced by California migrant workers during the Great Depression. In the 1920s and 30s New York, a movement of Black artists was known as the Harlem Renaissance and included writers such as County Cullen, Langston Hughes, and Zora Neale Hurston, and painters like Jacob Lawrence. This is panel 50 from his 60 panel migration series depicting the mass movement of African Americans from the South to the urban centers in the North. Now let's review your ability to identify some of the major art styles from the early 20th century. Number a scrap sheet of paper from one to five and see if you can identify the styles of each work. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. And now for the answers. Number one, cubism. Number two, surrealism. Number three, Dada. Number four, non-objective art. Number five, phobism. In the next unit, you will be studying the arts and culture of the post-World War period.